morning, this is day two. So Bolton was asking this guy and today I gotta drive three people in the ferry with only one seat. This is a scrub. <laughs> hey! You need the ferret in there? Yeah. Uh, we are so much for you. <laughs> Well, okay, so let's go. So status update, we arrived safe on the boat. Uh, I asked him, how is it like? <laughs> like if I take someone there, uh, let's say for two hour ride or three hours, they're like, mm, yeah. And they actually had to lie down, they said, because uh, it was impossible like to, to hold. And plus I have like uh, metal railings, like if you bump your head, it can hurt. Uh, well, it worked out, uh, manageable. Uh, but dirt road, I probably won't do it to anyone, it's good. it would be rough in there. Probably another hour, we're gonna relocate to the north of the island, gonna scout that area. Darren's gonna stay another night with me. It is ferret walking time. And he's just nibbling on my bananas. Stop nibbling on my bananas, come on. I actually didn't show a setup of this trip and it's different. It seems like every trip I do alone one, something changes all the time. So in here, right now, I have this uh, giant cage, almost takes up to full door. Now in here, under the blanket there, under this jacket, it's uh, two jugs of uh, Four gallons each, yeah. So about, I got basically about 36 liters here. That's my Slumberjack tarp that I never used before yet. Uh, ferret food, ferret fiends, bunch of shoes and so on. We're a uh, drone bag, camera bag. Underneath it, a cooler in case need to store seafood and so on. Bucket, big pot over there. This is my sleeping bag that's you know, inside a canopy, but I just drove the guy so I kind of relocated it here. And one big thing, well, besides the ferret cage being present on this one, the one big thing difference between camping trips and one trip is just like an actual full luggage bag instead of backpack. So, and on camping trips, sometimes just this much clothing in bag like this would be just enough. And of course, this is gonna be like my extra beer storage just to ensure the luggage bag doesn't move because I had it moving in buffer. I now found the, the seats where they mount, the hooks. Uh, these are serving as racket strap points now. And a uh, piece of clothing I keep jacket. I usually on both sides, that's why I have blanket on that side and this side is so it doesn't when if cage slides all the sharp things so we don't damage the the body of the truck inside yeah, my jars whatever more shoes cat food or potential crayfishing yeah, that's that side that cooler which is empty right now I'm not sure if it's gonna be used oh water jugs are right here what i do is basically like this lift just position it straight down and i can fill water right here and that slumberjack tarp right here that I never used. One day. It's mainly for groups or like super rare, like continuous day, many days uh, rain situation. And of course I have like three uh, toilet papers here and all that. So the cooler I potentially wanted to use as an actual fridge and use fridge as a, a, a freezer, uh, go minus 20 because past two months or so uh, it's been glitching out I need to repair it but uh, a certified professional uh, that does domestic fridges the lineup is two months and you have to drop it off and basically wait and I was going on a trip so cancel that but winter time I'll probably detach leave it with them and get them fixed get it fixed so what happens is uh, even for example right now uh, there's probably 12.8 volts pumping on rare occasions the green light here uh, would like it would shut off 
not shut off, but go into idle mode uh, for no reason. There's been cases where full sun, solar, I have full battery pumping everything. And I come here and it's sitting at like 13 Celsius. The difference will be set up compared to one last trip. Uh, last one trip is that thing I built. There's lots of storage, juices, all kinds of stuff in there. All my pot pottery, like obviously my stove is in here, right there. Uh, these new drawers here. So I have like all kinds of miscellaneous here. Battery packs, wires, thermocell refills, all that, all my uh, body wash, two brushes, all that stuff is there. Nice to organize spices shelf. Trust me, in this cabinet there now, there is so much room, like, oh my god. Um, my little TV here, well, offline movies. But anyway, back to the fridge, so one issue is that when uh, full charge and it goes like kind of idle. And another thing is it reaches certain temperatures, so for example right now it's at 5. It's also not reaching temperatures fast enough, it takes more time than it used to. But when it does, sometimes it doesn't go into idle mode, the steady uh, orange light. So in this mode it's pumping supposedly roughly 3.5 amps uh, an hour. Uh, in idle mode it's supposed to do like 0.5 amps. And so that means overnight, when parked outside, or even camping and so on, it's working constantly while I'm not getting solar. Or like in con cloudy conditions, when I'm barely getting solar, it's just doing full work. What it takes for me is I just like plug, unplug, and it kind of resets it but after a while it does it again so it's kind of been inconsistent how it works and i can't really it's hard to trust it uh, fully uh, yeah so i need to get it fixed so my... uh, another different thing about this setup right now is uh because on ferry rides here the fuel packs and stuff need to be empty and so on so uh, i actually keep this uh, in there while riding the only reason I took this is there's gonna be potentially a couple of spots in a couple of weeks where I might just as a backup fill them up and strap them back here. Stack uh, the box of my miscellaneous stuff. That's the point of setup. Just box is strapped to the here. And I found the use for uh, uh, my, uh, uh, what do you call it, trash. Uh, so basically, the handles of this box, just harness it to that. And I'm doing an experiment. This is the second day. I got two garbage bags inside here. And I'm gonna try to fill it up fully uh, to the maximum. Probably gonna take three, four days. Just to see how much <laughs> how much room it has and how wobbly and how much it's moving, shifting and all that stuff. But I think I found my permanent uh, trash room set up right here. So the reason I have this set up here, so much stuff on the roof and water packs actually mounted here. I used to I used to be on 37 inch tires, right now I'm on 35s. And uh, I had tire carrier swing out, so basically the swing out would go right here. Three rotor packs would be mounted here, big tire, but 35s now because I switched, it fits under. And uh, that, it was hitch uh, mounted tire carrier, so that's from broke and I... Uh, uh, basically decided, well, I contacted the producer, they didn't really, they weren't really responsive, so I just kind of like, you know what, I don't need it. And because I have this roof that is actually sitting on the steel skeleton inside here, this is all part on which roof is sitting, I can pretty much load any weight in there, it doesn't matter. And like, obviously you're gonna get top heavy, but because I'm so bottom heavy as well, it actually is a lot. If you want to see the track, uh, how it was like, or actually what happened to Wilco Tire Carrier, uh, you can check out this video here, or this corner, I guess. Uh, that's where I discovered it, and can you describe the issue if you want to buy it or not. Another recent update was, and I installed it, what, two, three weeks ago? Finally did these guys. This is just universal mount, just Amazon. Universal, any car, don't need to drill anything, you just like, uh, three screws on the bottom. You tighten them and that's how it holds. Uh, something like 20 bucks or 30, like cheap stuff. Uh, so these lights basically to give me night vision where I was missing all the time. I had this light here, 
positioned not like this but more straight to cover this corner on the other side but because this was flat uh, the dispersion was already not enough to cover the bushes and stuff that I want to see on turns over there and it was blinding me in the mirror so this is like perfect setup now this covers exactly where I the light spots this when I get out from the car this whole area this is just under kind of like sporting rods and stuff and my back light over there in that way it's actually time for morning breakfast oyster morning breakfast especially this one right here oh my god this is gonna be good the longer you look at these things, the more disgusting they start to look. Mm. It's all milky. <laughs> Good. So we paid for campground spot yesterday but uh, and bought two bundles of wood, but they didn't actually use it. And those guys that we gave spot to, they didn't use it. So we're taking it. That's the first time I'm carrying wood like this. Just a ratchet strap here to the same points here. And this one here. This is how I have my box mounted. And uh, yeah, crab truck here as well. So that. Sturdy. Should be good. The sign said uh, private, private, what did you say private? It said private property access. Except for Islanders Galliano. or something like that. Oh, this is nice island right here. Yeah. Yeah, like a little kayak action and you could probably camp in there somewhere too. Yeah. Good stuff. So, can fish for rockfish on Giliano pretty much all along the western coast here, this portion. Uh, it's good, it's a reminder, I totally didn't know the restrictions here, so that's good. Just arrived at another two spots uh, I marked on satellite image. Now I go, well, one was uh, blocked off completely, and now one uh, car is parked, and it's like uh, People who loved it when I said and about an hour hike to the cove. And we're not in the mood for the hikes here. It's supposed to be beautiful in there. Anyway, we're continuing. This is probably a mid-island now. Uh, there's gotta be something. I have like five, six spots marked still. Quaint island house, beautiful. That is just a walk access. Shore Axis 38, it says. It was another spot, the most likely spot actually, to free camp, no, private property gate right away. So we're already starting to have a feeling that we may be back to that provincial park tonight. Because I think I only got about three more points left and that's gonna be kind of it. So we were at Mantak Bay here, proceeded to this spot, denied, 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 that one is denied, that was that cove you need to hike to. Uh, that potential spot denied, oyster spot denied, denied, and just now we're here. And on backcountry road book thing, there is a dirt road continues here, but on Google it doesn't know it. But anyway, there is a gate. So last spot that is left is to go to try to go here.
All right, let's get some raw impressions. What do you think of this island? I think it's locked up tighter than a nun's, uh... Oh, wait a minute. We got it. It's a friend. It's a family-friendly channel. Where it's is family. it? Family. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make it family-friendly, but yeah, it's no, hard. It's, it's hard. It's a it's a tricky island to camp on. That's for sure. Yeah. So essentially, this is just provincial park. That provincial park, the Dixie something, in the very north. Uh, it's only accessible by boat. There is a campground there. So back to deploying crab traps, all that, and unpack. And same guys over there. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not using it, just going to do that. I had already two accidents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just stuff. So yeah, that's his, that's his place. He goes there. There's a hole on the bottom of the floor, and he just chills there. The so crabs are in cage, uh, basically, right at the end there. Uh, not dead, still alive. Uh, just someone recommended, you know, so we don't spoil. Just put them in the fridge. We'll go in hibernation, and uh, it's gonna be a bit for like six hours or so. Because it's hibernation. This is actually see what I went into the ocean. This thing all day. Goodbye, buddies. Oh yeah, it's approaching nice and red. These guys. Here's. Oh, cast a little bit just, just before we want. Very beautiful, beautiful, nice state park. The pier is awesome. So I just let the fishing rod here, just kind of rest. Went up there, sat, chat with some guys. I come back. And I start drilling, there is just heavy weight, no fighting, nothing. And right towards the end, towards the very end, there's all of a sudden a fight. And it's an actual shark, bull shark, or dogfish. So let's see here. Fighting, fighting. There you go. That's what I wanted to catch. Oh, oh, oh. Except fishing rod don't break. Oh, oh. Yeah. Yes, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Can't let this guy go properly. Certainly not keeping it. Yeah, this fine gentleman gave me pliers and actually helped me to unhook the dogfish. It's gone. No harm done. So tomorrow I'm migrating probably to Salt Spring Island. I think the ferry is at uh, 11, something like this. I think it has two stops, not direct. It's apparently to Salt Spring Island from Galliano, direct only a couple of times a week. And the rest just goes through like main, tender, and kind of does that little loop. But it's okay. So I'm gonna pack up everything right now, all my catching stuff. And I'm kind of getting tired of patching up this net. I need something sturdier. This is what happened. Yet another big hole that I need to patch up, kind of like this and this. It's like all over the place now that I need to do patches. That's a big one, actually. There's one already here from, uh, uh, what's it called? Jones Lake. Probably log got stuck, but... This one was just sitting straight down, that's it. I think crabs just snipped. Oh 
long sleep time. It seems like while I was gone, Darren didn't even unpack the rooftop tent. He's sleeping right now in the passenger seat of his car. Uh, our fire is burning. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he would swing by after a while because I was gone. Fishing, just chilling, enjoying views, and uh, he kind of went wanted campfire, but yeah, just a little too many beers. But anyway, so that's day two. Tomorrow, Salt Spring. Ciao. Hey comrades, don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed yet, you should by hitting that subscription button and also bell notification next to it so you can actually get my video updates both in notification and your video feed and as well you can support this channel if you like my videos through PayPal or Patreon in the links down below or just after this video.